This is my second visit to Horn Pond. One of my objectives was to follow the swan families from their nest in springtime to as far into fall as I can follow them. Here is the lagoon nest. The other nest is in the marsh pond. It is now the middle of April and usually you will not see any cygnets until May. Now watch just above that goose on the left. Wow, I'll give him a 9.5 for that jump. Another one in the middle. We get a better view of the nest from this side of the marsh pond. Most of the time, the mother sits quietly on the nest. Once in a while, she will get up and do some rearrangement. After a few minutes, she will settle down and sit patiently on her eggs. About a week later, I came back on a nice spring day. People were out getting their exercise and the swans were still on their nests. Here is Dad doing some repair work around the house. After the house cleaning, the male does some investigating. This is the beginning of Harry the harassing goose pestering these swans. I was not sure why Harry kept the male swan occupied, but as soon as the swan stopped, the goose would turn around and bother the swan again. We'll come back to this story later. I'll also give you time to guess which family hatches first. In early morning in April, and you can hear the red-winged blackbirds chattering to each other. I like how they puff up when they do this call. Also notice the yellow stripe on their wing. High atop a tree, across the pond, is a hawk. Look how big his talons are. The garden is about ready to be started and the cormorants are at their usual perch in the lagoon. The main reason I came this morning was to go on a trash pickup walk with Rodney Flynn and his crew. You got your wave, babe? This morning, his crew consists of Lisa and Dick. You will usually see them on Saturday mornings around 9 a.m. at Sturgis Street. It was also a good opportunity to go for a walk around the pond. Here is goose number 84 MC. He is part of a study to track where he travels. To me it seems a little constraint for the goose, but it is very easy to identify him. I guess he just gets used to the collar. Now this is the old fashioned way to track geese with these rings around their legs. Rodney likes to keep the geese off the park area. Keep going. Keep going. 
Oh, don't you squawk at me. <laughs> That's a cast. That's plastic. The original's in City Hall, the Rotunda. These, these things double as a, as a walking stick. All right. There are nice views on this side of the pond. You may see a woodpecker. That bird doesn't look like it's big enough to make that kind of noise. <laughs> it's a good day for turtles to warm up in the sparkling sun. There were many people fishing on this beautiful day. The buds were starting to bloom. Uh-oh, we don't want anyone to have a branch fall on their head. Nice job. We've made it to the parking area by the power plant, and there's plenty of trash here. There used to be a brass plaque on this pedestal. Someone has pried it off and melted the brass, so it can then be sold. Yeah. Show off. <laughs> Please do not do this at home. Rodney is a professional trash picker upper. We're coming down the home stretch along Arlington Road. A man then informed us of a problem with the flag after a long winter. Yeah, somebody ought to notify him. They got ripped and it's, and it's hanging on one thing. It's off. They need a new flag. The flag's all set on the end. You never know what you'll find along the shore. This plaque yeah, was left alone. That's got a big name. I think it's, it's, too, it's too small for them. Oh. They don't even see this brass because the, the letters are raised. Who knows? It's got a big Quite a few tree limbs have been cleared along the shore. Looks like a party was here recently. It was a great day for fishing and horseback riding. We are now back to Sturgis Street. 
and the pond is much cleaner than it was when we started. We'll use this map to get our bearings. We have Arlington Road and Sturgis Street and the causeway. On the upper left, we have the dam and the power plant. To the right, we have the lagoon, and the red circle is where the swan nest was. The two smaller ponds are the marsh pond and what I call the third pond, and those are the locations of the nest. And the garden is right there. A few weeks later, I checked on the nest. The marsh pond cygnets have already hatched. It looks like they may be about a week old. The one on the left wants to take a nap. This one is already trying to feed like mother, but can't quite reach the bottom. Mom grabs the meal and brings it to the surface for the young ones to feed on. They will try to eat anything green. They are a favorite for taking pictures. Oh my golly. See? Oh, he's protecting them. You want some more? Okay. Oh, I know why that big one came over. It smelt bread. That's a nice pose. And here's a great blue heron looking for a meal. A couple of days later, the parents are dredging in the marsh. You probably see him better from here. Yeah. I don't know if you can. Yeah, you know what? Did you see him? Meanwhile, the lagoon swan will take another week before the eggs hatch. One week later, and people are still feeding the swans. You can see a big difference in the young cygnets. I am surprised the parents are so tolerant of the duck grabbing some bread. I guess dad is more occupied with feeding himself. All right, duck, that's enough. The marsh pond is fairly stagnant. The swans here tend to look like they need a bath. 
They are now already able to feed themselves in the shallow water. A geese family took up residence at the end of the peninsula. Unlike the swans, the young goslings must swim fast to keep up with their parents. Ducklings also must be fast swimmers. I then checked out the lagoon nest. Something seemed to be stirring. Now look over her left shoulder. You'll see a tiny head moving. Now if you missed it, let's look at it again, just over her left shoulder. There's another head on her right in this blow up. It won't be long before they leave the nest. And the garden is beginning to take shape. Two days later, the lagoon swan is still sitting on her nest. To the right, Dad is still close by. It's getting harder to see the nest with all the bushes turning green. The marsh swans are still trudging through the dirty water. This is the shot I was looking for. The baby swans leaving the nest for the first time. Here's the photographer again, and she confirmed my suspicion. later in the afternoon the night they weren't out. So they're brand new. Yeah. So when do you think these were born or hatched? Well, I want to say yesterday probably. Sometime in the last... Day or two? Yeah, because nobody else had seen them. And I mean, this may very well be their first foray out. We both noticed a lighter colored signet. This illustrates the color difference. She then told me about a third nest. Third one. Oh, where's that? You know where the sand pit is? Yeah. If you look out in the reeds out there. This is a brand new nesting pair. I know there were goslings under there somewhere. Oops, there's a couple.
The Marsh Pond family definitely needed some grooming after swimming in this water. I like this shot of the parents shaking the tree. It's now Memorial Day weekend. I started keeping an eye on the third nest. All is quiet today. The Marsh family is doing well. Here is Dad tearing at some reeds. But he only eats a little bit at the bottom. This one's having a hard time. Can't rest too long. Back to taking care of the kids. Our goose family likes the garden. The beaver dam grew in the summer. The beavers were trying to keep water in the third pond. Fowl Brook is flowing now, but it got pretty dry later on. Watch the stick move around. A closer look tells me it's not some sunfish. It could be a snapping turtle. I was interested in where this family stayed at night. They started back to the nest. And it looked like they were about to settle down for the night. But then the parents took off. To me, it looked like they were looking for something in the water. Now, if there was danger, why were the little ones still swimming around? As night fell, the parents stayed feeding, while the five little ones kept on swimming around. I stayed till it got pitch dark and couldn't see anything. In fact, the last thing I could see, it looked like they were going back to the nest. The next morning, there were only four signets. Maybe that was a snapping turtle lurking in the waters. The lagoon swans are doing well. I still count six. Here comes a cormorant in for a landing.
People notice that they often keep one leg out of the water. It's like a rudder on a boat. <laughs> Isn't it? Papa. What, honey? I want to go <coughs> to the park. Okay, we'll leave it. I just want to see the little swans. You don't see them every day. All right, they're cute though, huh? Take a look. <laughs> There must be a thousand pictures of these swans. If it's green, they'll try to eat it. The swan parents are very guarded around dogs. Even though it's a little windy, listen to the woman describe the light-colored swan. With a brown beak and brown legs and buff-colored, we'll call this one Buffy. Notice the black beaks on Buffy's siblings. And by the way, you really shouldn't feed the swans. I'm sure what they're eating now isn't good for them. Then I heard there's a giant turtle. That's a big one. The turtle took a long time to surface, so I waited. In the meantime, people were kayaking and fishing. Then my camera had a problem. I lost the blue color. So here's the creature from the Green Lagoon. Big tail, big, big head. Andrew, don't get too close. Don't get too close. close. Let, him, let him come up. Let's take a look at him. He looks like a crocodile. I don't know. He looks like a crocodile. Go back. See him, Maya? Right over here. See how big the oh, his shell is just came to the top there? That's yeah. how big his shell is? Somebody put their creeping rod in. No way. They're very mean. We don't, we don't make wild animals mean, mad, uh, mad. It's like with, with geese and stuff when their little children are with them. You don't make them mad. They'll come over and bite your head. Take your ear right off the side of your head. Yeah. See how big his head is? What do you got a body part you don't need? No, I got a worm in the Not in the bucket though. He doesn't bother with worms. Just fish? Hey Paul. This was my only good shot of a snapping turtle. It then went under and disappeared. By the first week of June, the marsh swans were down to three. But they were still eating that green stuff. And they are learning to keep one leg out of the water. That's one less thing for snapping turtles to grab onto. With longer necks, they are able to feed for themselves in shallow water. The garden is beginning to take shape. The third nest is still on hold.
the Lagoon family is still intact. Here the parents are in deeper waters, dredging the bottom and letting the young cygnets eat. After feeding, they came into their favorite spot, the causeway. Buffy and siblings were doing okay. I like this pose. It will be a while before you can fly with those wings. A couple of days later, I found Rodney with his usual trash bag in hand. Say something to the camera. Go ahead, talk to the camera. Quack, quack. <laughs> Fowl Brook is doing well now. And the local beavers are busy. In competition between swans and ducks, the biggest swan wins out. As the swans go into deeper water, the ducks can then safely go to shore. The third swan pair I can't figure out. I was beginning to think nothing was happening at the nest. Often it would be left unattended for quite a while. Here mom goes wandering up the brook. I then walked around and found a number of turtles crossing the trails. Maybe they were finding a spot to lay their eggs. Here is the other half of the third pair, swimming in front of the giant boulder. Mom then comes back and goes and sits on the nest. I then found something very surprising. I spotted three unhatched eggs in the nest as Mom adjusts them. Why was the nest unattended for long stretches? They are probably first time parents and don't have the routine down yet. A 
a little more adjusting. And now to relax. You'll often run into rabbits along the bunny trail. Back at the lagoon, Dad lets everyone know who is the boss. If anyone is thinking of grabbing a meal, Dad chases them away. More pictures. Here is a good contrast of Buffy and the other siblings. After watching the other family, I was curious where this family stayed at night. They seemed very comfortable on the causeway, even with many people walking by. As night passed on, they stayed in the same spot. Here comes a large duck family to the causeway. I wonder if this is the mother of all the ducks, or maybe a few are orphans. They bedded down under a tree for the night. It was a very calm early June night. I stayed until there were barely shadows. The lights are planes landing at Logan Airport. The spire is the church at Winchester Center. The next time I visited the pond, there were only two swans left in the marsh. In the lagoon, the wild goose chase continued. Harry the goose was really antagonizing the swans now. I then checked out the third pond. Mom here was still on the nest, but much of the time she was not. Here she leaves for a swim, but look at the nest and you will see some tiny heads popping up. Many people thought the eggs never hatched, but the problem was this pair of swans were bad parents. No one ever saw any cygnets leaving the nest. Mom was more interested in going for a stroll. This is a relaxing pose. Today, the Marsh family was visiting the third pond. He did this pose a number of times. Two days before the official start of summer, it was like the geese called for a convention. This was the first time I saw so many in the marsh pond. The young goslings were having a feast.
The third pair of swans were in the brook. They were never again seen on their nest. Now I never knew if they just abandoned their young or they were met by some other fate. Then, if by some signal they all started their march to the main pond, further downstream out came the geese. I'm sure the dipping of the head means something in goose language. Yeah. The goslings were still eating everything in sight. Then I noticed more goslings coming out of the brook. Meanwhile, in the lagoon, Harry the goose is still keeping the swans occupied. You can hear him in the background. Then he is chased to the other side of the lagoon. Watch this. Dad is so tired, even Mom gets in the chase. Even a jogger has to wait before he can continue. Why Harry thought the swans were a threat was a mystery to me. The geese then slid into the lagoon and headed off for the main pond. After that group of geese went by, Harry the Goose then joined them. This was the last time I saw the chase. Not to be outdone, even a turtle got in the march. But it was not over yet. Another group joined the march. Where they all came from, I don't know. I only saw one family on the peninsula before today. Goslings can't fly, so they must have been close by. They followed the same path as the first group, through the lagoon, to the pond. If you are paying attention, the Lagoon family is now down to five. On a quiet June day, the water can act like a mirror. also be foggy. It's summertime and the fish are jumping. This is a damselfly. It has big bulging eyes 
and a very shiny stick-like body. I found this one by the brook. The duck family we saw earlier is doing fine. For a couple of days, I saw these ducklings without any parent. They were feeding in a small pool. The very next day, I saw only two. In fact, this was the last time I saw these ducklings. Life is tough without any adults around. This is a muskrat. Even though he looks like a beaver, you can tell he is not by his rat-like tail instead of a flat beaver tail. But he does look busy as a beaver here. By summer, more herons started showing up. You always seem to find people fishing here. Last thing we want is you to go get hooked. Ready, Em? Excuse me, mister. There you go, pal. The Marsh family was still having problems. This one has an injury on its neck. Will it survive? You'll have to watch part two to find out. The second part of this series will take you from summer into winter.